Howdy, I'm Roy, dude. Skyblock is probably one of the most popular challenges for Minecraft to ever be conceived, and that is no different on the mod pack landscape. One of the most famous examples is Sky Factory. Originally made by Bacon Donut, Sky Factory is one of the most notable mod pack series to ever be made on the platform. Having been played by multiple YouTubers spanning over millions of views involving Sky Factory content. After the production of Sky Factory 3, Bacon Donut passed the torch to Darkosto, who then made Sky Factory 4. And then, in 2022, he made a remake of Sky Factory 1. This, my dudes and dudettes, is the mod pack we'll be attempting to beat today. Now, officially, there isn't any real way to beat the mod pack. Instead, there's a series of challenges that need to be completed in order to beat this pack. Tier 1, Tier 2, and Tier 3, all varying in difficulty. These can be things from make a trophy room and collect every head from mobs in the game, fill a dirt chest up to the maximum limit, make three kinds of power, make pink out of power, the kind of stuff like that. So without further ado, my dudes and dudettes, I bring you Sky Factory 1. Let's begin. Once the world was done loading, the first thing I did was smash my face against the keyboard to check all my key bindings. And after a few minutes, my keyboard was set, and I was ready to begin. And like any skyblock, the first thing we must do is cut down this tree. With wood, now we can make a crafting table, a crook to harvest more shit from leaves, and a platform to catch this stuff that falls. And now, we wait. Fight! Wait, did you actually think I was just gonna stand here and wait for this stupid tree to grow? I got like a hundred other things I need to do. I can't just sit here and wait. Did you know that? You can accelerate photosynthesis by dancing. Watch as I rapidly hit the shift key over and over again to make trees grow faster. Now you know! With a quick, infinite source of wood at our disposal, we can now start grinding this tree for everything that it has. After grinding trees for almost 10 minutes, I decided to take a break and focused on making a wooden barrel and wooden crucible. Pause. I'm three minutes into the video and I've come to the realization that I have yet to explain what the hell's going on. So we just spawned on a tree in the middle of the void, only giving us access to four new resources. Wood, saplings, apples, and worms. By breaking leaves with a crook, we can increase the drop chance for these three items. With the wood, we can make a barrel and wood and crucible. With these, we can now turn plant materials into dirt and into water. So now with a barrel and crucible made, now I can use the remaining wood to expand my platform to fill in the chunk. In between my tree cutting session, I made an outline of how big I wanted my starter island to be. That way I had enough space to actually do all the things I want. With the platform done, I reorganized my workspace and began filling up the barrels and crucibles. With some freshly decomposed dirt at my disposal, I got to work reorganizing and expanding my tree farm. With some proper storage set up, it was time for round two of tree farming.
with multiple stacks of wood and saplings now in my inventory, I decide to switch to farming some string, which will be crucial for the next item I need to craft. Now, instead of having to set up a farm for spiders, I can instead use these aforementioned worms to infect the trees, for these are no ordinary worms. These are silkworms, which will rapidly consume the leaves to make a tremendous amount of strength. So while I wait for the worms to finish processing the trees, I'll start working on some Tinker's Construct tools. After my tinker's station was set up, the trees were ready for harvest, dropping a whopping nine stacks of string. With a successful harvest of string, it was time to start decomposing all my items. My efforts had produced approximately one stack of dirt, which would be plenty for what I need. I manufactured a few sieving frames and placed them down. Ow! Jesus! Oh. With the string I farmed, I made some blocks of wool to make a bed, as well as some meshes to put in the sieves. With the sieve setup complete, we can now unlock the next age of our Skyblock world. The Age of Stone. Now, while I sit here sieving away all this dirt that I made, I think it's time to- it's- it's once again time to explain what the heck's going on. By pushing dirt through the sieve, it will give us a random assortment of seeds or pebbles. More importantly, stone pebbles, which can be made into cobblestone. Trying to sift dirt with only one sieve can be very slow. So I'd recommend making a 3x3 three three sieve, which actually connects them all together to make it go much faster. From the dirt, we managed to get 54 cobblestone. Now with a hammer, we can break up the cobblestone into gravel, and then to sand, and then to dust. Depending on which block we put through the sieve, it'll give us a, a variety of new metals, including iron, which is necessary for the next step of our progression. Vein miner is going to be crucial for breaking all these all at once, to speed up the process. I decided to crush all the cobblestone down to dust, because not only did it drop iron, but it was also the only block that dropped redstone, which is another essential item I'll need in bulk for automated machines later. However, after sifting through 54 blocks of dust, the payout was severely lacking. I'm gonna need way more cobblestone to get a proper cobble generator running, which can only mean one thing, another grinding montage. I took a break from grinding to search up recipes for items that might be able to help make the work go faster. That's when I discovered wooden hoppers, which as it turns out for some reason are better than iron hoppers, which is just completely blasphemy. I also learned about wood chippings. By breaking a log down with a hammer, we can turn it into a dust that can then be processed into dirt. I have a tremendous amount of wood at my disposal now, so I decided to invest in a proper automation for my dirt production. Who knew that taking 6th grade woodworking class would actually amount to something one day? Now to test it and see if it actually works. <laughs> and just like that, we can now mass produce dirt. I proceeded to dump all my decomposable items into the system and waited for it to turn into dirt. In the meantime, I organized my chest, made some essential tool parts with string, 
browse JEI for more recipes, checked the task book, which as it turns out I had some tier 1 objectives completed, and finally, the dirt was ready for sieving. During my research, I discovered the recipe for building wands, which allow me to place multiple blocks of the same type all at once, which would make grinding much faster. For my next set of tools, I would need flint, which I can get from sieving gravel. Now, the reason I decided to use string to bind my tools together was that I can now use string to repair said tools instead of having to use flint, which is significantly cheaper because I have a stupid amount of string compared to flint. During my tinkering, the remaining dirt had finished and went straight to refining. I gathered up all the raw iron I had collected thus far to see if there was enough for the next stage of my progression. And thankfully, it was a yes. Now all we need to do is smelt it in a furnace to turn it into iron ingots. Except if I friggin' had one! Turns out I spent all my cobblestone on getting iron, and I didn't think to spend some of it on actually making a furnace, which would have been pretty essential to my plans. But not to worry, I can just get more like so. And just like that, we've got ourselves a furnace. Actually, a, a couple, just to be sure. With the iron cooking and a small nap later, I had finally reached the Age of Iron. And with it, made the most important item of all. A bucket. With this, we could finally make use of the water that we made with the Crucible back on day one. And thus, we can now get an infinite source of water. However, that's only half of a cobblestone generator, because we still need another crucial resource, lava. Which requires a whole other process to get. So while I wait on my second water source to finish decomposing, let's actually start working towards it. And in just a few simple steps, we now have a fired crucible, which will slowly turn the cobblestone into lava. The process, however, was very slow. Even after grinding and waiting for almost 20 minutes, only one third of a bucket was made. So what did I do to solve this problem? Well, uh, nothing. I just turned off my brain and went back to grinding. When I finally got bored, I went to go check the lava and boom! There was one bucket ready to go. During my grinding, I made sure to put away some sand and cobblestone so I can smelt them into materials I would need for machines, such as glass and smooth stone. For example, I could make a plain grinder. With a hand crank, this essentially doubled our ore output as raw materials go in and are crushed into dust to come out. After making some grinders, I also began reorganizing my workspace so that I could fit a cobblestone generator on my platform. The cobblestone generator was ready. Time for a moment of truth. And thus by day 5 of my Skyblock world, we now had a functioning cobblestone generator. After only breaking 5 pieces, I was already bored. Even if the cobblestone generator had cut out a large portion of the grind, it did not change the fact that I had to stand still and grind by hand. Luckily, during my early research stage, I had learned about the clicking machine, which I assume automatically clicks a block and figured that I could use this to automate the system. So I got to work making one.
I had finished the clicking machine. Now I won't have to sit AFK mining cobblestone for hours. Instead, I can put down this one block and have it all done for me. Fall.